I have a Dash Mini Toaster Oven. It is still in the box. I have not opened it yet. It says cute and compact, 550 watts. Counter cooking. No kitchen, no problem. And here's the back of the box. And I got this at Home Goods. The price was $19.99. I got this quite a few months ago and I have not used it yet. I'm gonna use it for the first time now. So let's take it out of the box and let's set it up. This is the smallest toaster oven I've ever seen. This is the little pan that comes with it for the inside of the toaster oven. You can see that it's square and I measured it and it is five inches wide by five inches tall. So this is a really small toaster oven. So there's this one dial on the front of the toaster oven and there's two little bread shapes and I'm assuming this is light toast and this is dark toast and it goes from one to five actually goes past five it goes to 15 and I guess that's a timer and there's a blue light here and we can see it heating up and this is what the inside looks like and actually I think the pan that I showed you might be like the crumb catcher pan I'm gonna read the instructions and see what the instructions say. As I do that, I will let this continue to heat up just to burn off any residues that may be on it or in it. Can you hear how loud this is? The timer ticks so loud. I just read the instruction manual and there is no temperature control on this appliance. So basically the knob on the front is just a timer knob and this appliance heats up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And the instruction manual says if you're supposed to cook something at 350, for example, just cook it for less time at 400. It says to just adjust the time accordingly and this metal pan that we saw is for cooking and on the very bottom of this unit there is a crumb catcher tray underneath it the instructions also say to preheat this for three to five minutes they say if you want to shut it off what you do is you unplug it so let's unplug it so unplugging it turned the heat off but the timer is still going I just forced the timer off. I never like doing that because sometimes it could kind of mess it up, but for the sake of filming, that's what I did. Let me show you what I have here and why I wanted to test out this mini toaster oven. I have this mini cake pan that's shaped like an Easter bunny, and I also have these mini spatulas, and both of these items are from the Dollar Tree. I picked them up a few weeks ago, and I've been meaning to make this video for a while, just haven't had a chance to do it yet. So I will be testing out this mini silicone baking pan, at the same time I test out this toaster oven. We'll see how it goes and I just tested to see if this mini baking pan will fit in the mini toaster oven and it does. It's like a perfect fit. I am going to be making an almond flour cake. You can make any kind of cake you want. I'm really just making this video to test this mini cake pan in the mini toaster oven. The recipe for the almond flour cake that I have is for an eight by eight inch cake. So I am gonna cut the recipe in half and only make half of an eight by eight inch cake. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to crack two large eggs into this bowl and then I am gonna beat the eggs. I have an immersion blender with a whisk attachment, so that's what I am going to use to beat these. Then it calls for the next ingredient would be half of a tablespoon of vanilla extract. I'm not measuring it, I'm just kind of estimating that then one quarter cup of honey. I have some forest honey from Poland and it's really good. So I'm just gonna put a, about a quarter of a cup in here. Again, I'm just estimating it. I'm 
this is where one of the mini spatulas is going to come in handy. This honey is obviously really sticky, sticking to the spoon. I'm going to whisk that together. Next, I am going to add three quarters of a cup of almond flour. So here's half of a cup, and here's a quarter cup. I'm thinking that I might need to add another quarter cup of almond flour because the two large eggs that I used were really large eggs. I remember thinking that they were really the size of jumbo eggs, so let me add a little bit more of the almond flour. And then lastly, I'll be adding one quarter teaspoon of baking soda and a pinch of salt. And there's the batter, super easy. Now I'm gonna plug in the mini toaster oven. Here's my mini cake pan. I sprayed it with some cooking spray and now I am going to pour some of the batter into it. I don't think it will take all of the batter. We'll see how much it does take. I'm probably only, I'm probably only going to fill it about halfway because it will rise. There's the cake pan, and the recipe says to bake this at 350 degrees for 22 to 25 minutes. So I'm gonna put it in the mini toaster oven, which cooks at 400, and we'll cook it for about 15 minutes, and we'll see how that goes. Here's the toaster oven. It just finished preheating for three minutes, and I'm gonna put this pan in here. I'm trying to be very careful. I don't want to spill anything. I don't want to touch anything that's hot. And there it is. Perfect fit. And let's close this. And I just set it for 15 minutes. So we'll be back and we'll see what happens. This is my Dash Mini Bunt Maker, and while I have the mini bunny cake cooking in the mini toaster oven, I thought I could make a mini bunt cake with the rest of the batter. So let's try this out. The blue light's on, but I'm just gonna put it in anyway. Again, I don't know if I'm gonna use all the batter. They say to fill this about three quarters of the way. All right, that's about three quarters of the way. I still have a little bit of batter left and we'll close this and I'll be back to check on this in another 12 minutes or so. I decided to put the square baking pan that came with this toaster oven underneath the silicone bunny pan. And I don't know if you could see what's going on, but the top of the cake is really really brown there's also another heating element on top of the toaster oven i thought there was only the one heating element on the bottom which we've seen but no there's another heating element on top actually as i say that i'm wondering if this is done already let's take it out no the inside is not done let's push it back in something tells me it might be a disaster it's been about eight minutes now. Let's check and see what's going on with the bunt maker. That looks great. This looks like it's done. It feels like it's done. I'm gonna unplug this, grabbing a plate, and I'm gonna be very careful lifting this out. I did not use any cooking spray on this, I forgot. But that came out really nicely. The handles are a bit hot. I'm gonna let that cool down a little bit. That's what the mini bunt looks like. Can we turn it over? Is it gonna be stuck? Yeah, it's probably stuck. Is it supposed to cool first? Yep, 
You can see that the bottom is very nicely browned. Since this is an almond flour cake, it will look a bit different than a cake made with regular flour. I probably could have put more of the batter into it, uh, so that's why it's a little bit uh, flat. But it looks really cute. I'm gonna let this cool. There's smoke coming out of the toaster oven, so let's open it up and let's see what's going on in here. It looks like the cake might have burnt. I thought this might happen because of the heating element on top as well as the bottom. So that's what the top of the cake looks like. It is completely burnt. And that's what the other side of the cake looks like. You can see that it did not cook evenly. What I noticed is that it's not perfectly flat inside of this toaster oven. It's actually slanted toward the front. So the, the part that was toward the back, which is the ears, had less batter than this part, which is why this part uh, did not cook uh, as much as this part did because uh, it is slanted inside and everything seems to slant this way. I'm gonna put this aside and let this cool also. I have this mini round cake pan. I am going to use this for the rest of the batter. Here's the rest of the batter in the mini cake pan. I'm going to put this into the toaster oven and I'll set the dial for about eight minutes and we'll see how this does. There's the mini cake pan, it's a perfect fit. And I set that for about eight minutes. It's been two minutes with the round cake pan. And I don't know if you could see it, but the top has completely burnt like uh, the bunny cake did. And I'm pretty sure that if I take it out now, the inside's gonna be raw. Yeah, the inside is still raw. So I'll put it back in and we'll cook it for another four minutes or so. But it seems to me that this toaster oven just is not good at baking. Okay, the timer just went off. Let's take this out. It's probably burnt to a crisp. I was just reading some reviews and I'm wondering if putting some aluminum foil over the top would keep it from burning the top. That's what it looks like. You can see that the top of it is just as dark as the pan that it's in. Let's test it with a toothpick in the center. The toothpick came out clean. So let's flip this over and see if it'll actually come out of the pan. It doesn't. So this is a little nonstick baking pan. I thought I would be able to not have to grease it or spray it, but Unfortunately, that's not the case yet. Yeah, it is really well stuck to all of the edges. This is just a total disaster. I went around the edges with a toothpick and now I'm gonna use one of these mini spatulas to see if I could pry this out because it seems to be stuck on the bottom as well as the sides. So that's what's going on here. The inside seems like it could have cooked like another minute or so, but obviously the outside is very dark. It tastes really good though, wow. So here's the mini bunt cake out of everything we just did. This one came out the best and I'm gonna grab a fork and cut into this. And that's what the mini cake looks like. Next time I would add more of the batter to it so it would uh, be a thicker cake but this should be fine for now so let's taste this it's nice and moist inside it's so good the texture is denser than a cake made with regular flour because this is made with a nut flour but it's really satisfying it's not too sweet it has a slight hint of vanilla flavor so here's the bunny cake i'm gonna taste this even though the back is just like totally black I'm hoping that maybe that will taste like a toasted marshmallow. If you've ever had like the toasted marshmallows that are like black on the outside, maybe that's what this will taste like or it just might taste burnt. So um, 
I'm expecting it to be much crunchier than the Bundt cake. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna taste it. It's not as moist as the Bundt cake. It's drier inside and it's a bit tougher, but the burnt top is not overwhelming. Like I do get a little bit of bitterness from that. It's still edible. Like if I really wanted to eat this, I could eat this. I'm gonna taste an ear just to see what's going on on this side of the toaster oven. That's really burnt. It tastes like burnt toast. If you've ever had like really, really dark burnt toast, that's what that tastes like. So then here's the round one. We can see the top is just as dark as the bunny one. And that's what the other side looks like. So I'm just gonna cut it in half with my fork. Let's take a look at the inside. Here's what the inside looks like. Now I did put a toothpick in and the toothpick did come out clean, but it seems to be a little bit, maybe a little bit undercooked in the middle. Looks a little bit moist. I don't know if you could tell on the camera. I'm gonna taste this piece. Yeah, that's undercooked. I definitely should have left this in longer than the eight or nine minutes that it was in there. I just figured since it was a smaller pan and since the toothpick came out clean, uh, that it might be done, but this is not done. This needs to be cooked a little bit more. Um, the inside is too moist and it does have that taste of like a raw cake batter. So, so it is definitely the bunt maker for the win. And I'm really kind of disappointed in this mini toaster oven because I thought I would be able to bake in it, but it looks like uh, the way it's designed, that is not the case. It's now the next day and I just made another batch of the cake batter and I'm going to try it again, this time with some aluminum foil uh, on top of the cake pan. So I'm going to fill this up probably around three quarters because it didn't rise much. And I'm going to put some aluminum foil on top. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse it so the ears are toward the front. So there will be a little bit more batter in the ears and we'll see if uh, if it bakes more evenly that way. So let me grab some foil. I just covered the cake pan with some foil and the toaster oven has been on for a few minutes so it is hot already. Let's open it up and let's put the cake pan inside. I have it resting on the little metal tray that comes with this just because the silicone is a little flexible. So I've just put it in there with the ears toward the front. I'm trying to tuck the foil so that there's airflow around it. Okay, now let's set this for 15 minutes. And we'll come back after 15 minutes and we'll see if it baked or if it burnt. It's been 15 minutes, so the timer went off. Let's open this up and let's see what's going on with the cake. And that's what it looks like. Oh my gosh, it's so much better uh, now than when I did not use the aluminum foil. However, it is far from cooked. Um, I just tried to touch it with my finger and it's really raw still. So I'm gonna put the aluminum foil back on it and I'll put it back in there and we'll cook this. Actually, let me push the foil in. And we'll cook this for another 15 minutes. It's been another 15 minutes, so let's see what's going on now. Let's open this up. Oh, that's looking really good. Here's the bunny cake. This is baked. We can see that this side baked darker than this side, which is really interesting. Maybe it's just because of how the aluminum foil was laying, but this is definitely a very big improvement from when I tried to bake it without any aluminum foil on it at all. I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes, then I'm gonna flip it over onto the plate and we'll check it out. Okay, so here's the cake. It looks like it's not sticking. Look at this, it's, it's popping out really nicely. 
And there's the bunny cake. It's really cute. You can see how the ears darkened more. And I don't know if you could see that the eyes darken more. And some of the features of the face are visible. It's really cute. So I would say this is a success. But I'm going to let it cool down a few more minutes. And then I'm going to cut into it. And we'll take a look at the inside of it. It's been about 10 minutes now. Here's the cake. It's so cute. I'm going to cut it in half. And we're just going to take a look at what's going on inside. This looks like it is very nicely baked. I don't see any raw spots inside. I actually think maybe it was baked for a little bit too long. Um, maybe it didn't need 30 minutes in total. Maybe 25 or 20 minutes would have been good, but it's definitely an improvement from the first time. It's very good. The flavor is excellent. It's still moist, but at the same time, it is just a little bit dry. So if I was to bake this again in the Dash Mini Toaster Oven, I would definitely decrease the time. Um, I'd probably check it at 20 minutes and see how it was at 20 minutes. And then if it needed longer, I'd check it again at like 25 minutes. I think 30 minutes was just a little bit too much, but it's really good. It came out great. I would have no problem serving this to somebody. I really enjoy this cake with the seven minute icing on top. It's really good like that. And actually for Easter, one of my family members is making this cake with the seven minute icing on top and then coconut on top. So it's gonna be like a coconut Easter cake. It's gonna be really yummy. So after a really bad start, it looks like, yes, you can bake a cake in this dash mini toaster oven you just have to make sure to cover your cake pan with some foil or some kind of cover and uh, yeah it worked great so I hope this video was helpful for you if it was please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to this channel if you'd like me to post more videos like this one thanks so much for watching have a great day bye